In this video, we're going to start to study functions of two or more variables. So before we talk about those, let's talk about the kinds of functions we already understand. Back in one variable calculus, we had scalar valued functions, plain old things like f of x equals x squared. Had one input, one output, simple. And we knew how to draw a picture of it. We put the input on one axis, we usually call that x. And we put the output on the other axis, we usually call that y. And if we had f of x equals x squared, we drew, drew a picture of it. And that was some nice curve. Great. And we were able to use geometry to help us understand these functions. And we saw things like that if you wanted to know the rate at which the function is changing, that's the same thing as the slope of a tangent line. And we know how to do that. You take a derivative. And if you want to know the total amount of stuff that was, you know, things were accumulating at a rate of x squared, and you want to know the total amount of stuff, that's the area under the curve. And we compute that using an integral. So geometry helps us understand plain old scalar functions. Then we advance to vector valued functions. Now with vector valued functions, we still only had one input but we had several outputs. So if you had the vector value function cosine ti plus sine tj, well, that was one input, the time, and several outputs, and that made it harder to draw. And what we usually did is we drew a graph where both axes were output. And we would draw the curve that got tracked out. So this gives us a circle. And then if we wanted to have more information, we might do things like put arrows to indicate which way we're going around the circle. And then we might say, oh, we're here at time 0, and we're here at time pi over 2, and we're here at time pi, and we're here at time 2 pi, and we're here at time 3 pi. And by putting extra markings on our graph, we give some indication of what the input is doing, even though it's really just a picture of the output. Now let's look at functions of several variables. Now there are a lot of examples of functions of several variables. You know, we have a formula for the area of a triangle. It's one half base times height. Well, that's a function of, several, of two variables. You can think of that as a function of the base and the height. So area is a function of base and height. When we did polar coordinates, we had x being r cosine theta. Well, that's a function of r and theta. We had y being r sine theta. That's a function of r and theta. And then we have just garden variety formulas, like some function of x and y being x squared plus y squared. So there are lots of these problems where, where something depends on more than one variable. And we want to figure out how to draw a picture of it. And there are two ways. One is to draw the graph. Now the graph needs an extra variable. So we let z be f of x, y. And there you go. This is the curve z equals x squared plus y squared. Now there, and just like with graphs of ordinary functions, you can use geometry you can, uh, to understand things, like certain rates of change have to do with slopes of certain lines that you get when you slice this graph with a plane. But it's hard to draw because you've got three variables. And if you had a function of three variables, then you'd need four variables in order to graph it. So. The usual way that we draw pictures of functions of more than one variable is with what are called level curves. We don't show the output directly, we just show the inputs. This is the opposite of what we did for vector valued functions. So suppose we're looking at the, the function f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared. What we might do is we might draw a circle here and put a number one by it and put a circle here, and put the number 4 by it, and put a circle here, and draw the number 9 by it. And what we're saying is, at all of these points, on, on this inner circle, the function takes on the value 1. This is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. This is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4. This is the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. 
So we draw the curves that you know the curves that give you a particular value of the function. And these are called contour maps or level curves, or when you're hiking, they're called topo maps. Okay. So those are the different ways that we can draw functions of several variables. Now, we had some concepts from functions of one variable. We knew what a domain and a range was. The domain is a set of all possible inputs. Well, now we got a function of two variables, so it's all points in R2. It's all pairs, x, y, that are valid inputs. Or if we have a function of three variables, it's all triples, x, y, z, that are valid inputs. And the range is the set of all possible outputs. This is a subset of the real line. So for example, if we took the function x squared plus y squared, no matter what x is and y is, x squared plus y squared makes sense. So the domain is everything. It's all of R2. It's the entire plane. And the range is all of the non-negative numbers. You could get zero or any positive number as a sum of two squares. Or if we had a function square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, then we say, hmm, we're taking a square root, so the thing we're square rooting better not be negative. So x squared plus y squared has to be at most 1. So the domain is the unit disk. It's everything inside the unit circle. And the range is 0 to 1. 